All right, ladies and gentlemen, you're listening. Good morning. You're listening to the Louis B. Free Radio Show, Brain Food from the Heartland. I am thrilled to have returning to the show, June Driscoll. June, welcome back. Delighted to have you. Honored. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here, Louis. Thank you. So a little bit about yourself. Um, well, I'm an NLP trainer from the UK. Uh, I'm also a coach. I train coaching and I train hypnotherapy, um, all of which blend into each other. And I do coaching for uh, executives and in business, as well as anybody, anybody. I'm happy to coach anyone at all different levels. And, and it's fun. It's not like a job. It's not like working. How did you get, get involved initially? Well, that's quite funny because but my initial career, is I'm an accountant. Um, so there's two, two, two extremes here. But one of the things that happened when I worked in a corporate I had a fear of flying and it was something I didn't want to tell anybody about because it would show a weakness. So, um, but anyway, what happens with phobias, as maybe some of your listeners will know, if you don't do anything about them, they can generalize. So what happened is that fear of flying went to a fear of heights, went to a fear of escalators, went to a fear of stairs, went to a fear of bridges, Till what I was doing was just closing myself down and till one day I thought I've just got to do something about it. And so uh, I don't know if you heard of Paul McKenna. He's yes. uh, yeah, Paul, very famous in the UK, um, excellent uh, hypnotist. And because I'd seen Paul on the TV, I thought, well, I trust him. I'll let him get rid of my fear of flight, <laughs> which was very good of me. And uh, so I went to an NLP training, which he was doing with Dr. Bandler in London I knew nothing about NLP but on day two of the course Richard asked if anybody's got a fear of flying and so if you have a fear for somebody like me as soon as he said that I went a bit shaky I went red and I, I sat down in my chair so he couldn't see me and I age regressed to a little girl that's all I can say and of course Richard knows all the no, no stones. Yeah, I was either curious. Yeah, he knew exactly what he was saying. <laughs> um, and so he got me on stage, and I was so concerned, even though I was a public speaker at the time in, with my job, I was so, because I was involved in the phobia, I was in that moment of anxiety and panic, I didn't want to face the audience. So I asked, said to Richard, I'll come on stage if you can turn my chair around the other way, which is not great for a demonstration. But um, so Richard got me on stage and I had my chair turned around. And the next thing I know, my eyes are closed. And I'm having great fun. And 20 minutes later, because Richard's also demonstrating what he's doing to the sure. audience, it had gone. All of those fears had gone and I could not believe it. I thought it was impossible to feel that good that quickly. Wow. And, and I was looking forward to, to flying. Now, when you've never when you've been scared that's never been in your mind you know and um it, it was um, absolutely amazing but all the other phobias went too so they all had a knock-on effect and i didn't i just wanted to to do everything so that was a nine-day course and i kept working on the course i kept thinking this is the best thing this is so much better than accounting this is changing people's lives. <laughs> Not, we, we certainly need accountants. but <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I still love accounting, but this was great. But by the end of the week, I decided uh, this is what I wanted to do as a living. I wanted to, to, to train. I wanted to be really good at this, to learn more and more and more. And I'm still learning. That's why I like to come to um, Dr. Bandler's seminars, because I learn something new all the time and it keeps me going keeps me at the top of my game so that i can help people and um it's just amazing it's fun it's fun you know doing things that are fun and also facilitating change for other people it's, it's just not like work it's just a great a great gift i think that uh been taught some wonderful skills and methodologies and love using them so and helping you're helping people you know and you remember what it was like it, absolutely. Every time somebody comes to see me, I, I, I can't feel that I'm like them because we're all different the way. But, but I understand that you can get something, a phobia for no reason or from somebody saying something to you. 
but I never ever thought it was possible to get over these things. People used to say to me because I used to live by Gatwick Airport and I worked for an airport. So having a fear of flying is not a great thing. <laughs> <laughs> but they, people used to always talk about flying and going to America. And I said, oh, I don't want to go to America. Now I said that because I didn't, I, I knew that I wouldn't be able to fly. I was convinced. So if I told people I didn't want to go to America, when in fact that's all I wanted to do, then that would stop them asking me. And uh, of course, uh, I said, Joy, I love coming here. So the last two years, we haven't been able to come here. Yeah. It's been, oh, I've missed it so much. It's, uh, it's so nice to be back, to go to Universal Studios. You, <laughs> uh, I'm, like, I'm like a child when I'm here. It's just it right? great. It's great. It's that's, really that's, good. That's great. And it's nice. It's it's nice being back. I know you haven't been able to. They haven't been able to have the seminars in Florida for a while. But yeah. I want to talk about anxiety. And and I know that when you did the book uh, NLP for the World, uh, your piece on laughing in the face of anxiety and all of the the word anxiety we hear so much more now. And I get I get concerned because everybody attributes everything. It's anxiety. It's anxiety. And and of course all the advertisements about them take if you've got anxiety you take the it just i get concerned and i get concerned when i read surveys of young people young kids mm -hmm. that are are talking about anxiety what can you tell us about anxiety Jude? i know that's very broad but yeah no no not at all it's what i notice when people and particularly over the pandemic i've seen a lot of young people um be, be, because of not being able to go to school, et cetera. But when you see somebody and they tell you, they, they tell you they have this thing called anxiety and it's as if they're describing their self that this absolutely consumes them. But anxiety is only a word and it actually, it's planning for the future because anxiety hasn't happened. Anxiety is planning for something bad to happen. So one of the first things I do, and as I've put um, in laughing in the face of anxiety, is change the word. Because when you hear the word anxiety, you get feelings. People will make little pictures in their head like disaster movies, and it'll be the worst that can happen. So the first thing I do is I, I say to people, let's forget that word. Let's say it doesn't exist. And tell me about a word that makes you laugh. Now, when somebody's feeling anxious, it's not really easy to access things that make you laugh. Sure, I, sure. I understand that. So I, I talk a little bit about words that make me laugh so that it relaxes them a bit. And I say, well, it doesn't have to be, you know, it, it could be something that your child has said, or if it's a young person, it could be something that you used to say when you were younger. It could be something your friend says. It can even be a naughty word. You know, whatever makes you laugh, it doesn't matter. There are no words that are barred. And once you went once and I tell people my word is bloater so that makes me laugh bloater um when I was younger a, a bloater was a fish and in my mind it was a great big fish um and it just made me laugh the thought of a massive fish and so that just makes me laugh and when I tell clients that then it allows them to give them some time to access a funny word so then I say to them now, instead of that old word, and I don't keep repeating it because I don't want them to keep having those bad feelings. I say, we're going to talk about, and I'll just say it's bloater. Say we've changed it to bloater. So I say to them, when was the last time you had a bloater? And of course, when you talk about it like this, it's making them laugh. So you're changing all the feelings and the pattern that they've had and they've been into. Um, and then you say, and I say, what's the biggest bloater you've ever had? So it sounds ridiculous, but once you've got people laughing, you've taken them away from those feelings that they've had before. So it's a great start. And I say to them, okay, but you're a young person, tell mum and dad, this is the word. They mustn't use that old word. They gotta use the new word. And it becomes very funny. And then when you've got a start and you've started changing the feelings, then you've now got rapport with them and you can do much more. So to me, it's a way in and I've worked with people that have had cancer and there have been uh, a particular lady I'm thinking of had breast cancer and she had a fear of needles and she would have rather not do anything about it because she was terrified of the needles. And so um, we did a, I just did a word change with her and it changed everything and she allowed me to facilitate the change, got treatment, all, all good. 
she's all good now. But she would have taken, um, she would not have um, gone into hospital and had the injection because of that, that thing called anxiety. So for anybody listening that, that has anxiety, uh, it would be great for them to think of something that makes them laugh instead of funny word, even a naughty word, and just use the new word. Just to get rid of the other one, it doesn't exist. And use the other word. It's, it's, it can be such fun, but it changes so much about the feelings. Um, yeah. That's fantastic about about the, the the lady with with breast cancer because again to to be that uh, anxious I'll use the word yeah. of the needles to not get the treatment. Yes. Yeah. Knowing and, uh, that. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. You're absolutely right. They they would make the decision not to get treatment rather than face their fear that's in their head and doesn't exist. But the good thing about all of these clever people that do this, people that can create this thing called anxiety, the good thing is they can create good things. They can create good pictures. They can create good feelings. So, you know, people have got great imaginations. If they can do that, that means they can create really good pictures and have freedom for the future. So it's wonderful to work with people like this because they've already shown you they have the mechanism to create pictures. They have the mechanism to create feelings. All we've got to do is, is change them to good feelings, to good pictures, to good sounds. It's beautiful. Uh, um, Athotitude.co.uk, and we've got those links up at louisfreeshow.com. I've got to ask you, June, when, when I think about this, the, the, the messages, and I don't want to do social commentary, and maybe I do, I don't know, but I, I think about the messages that we give young people uh, um, and how they look to us. And if we're anxious, I will use the word anxious or talking about anxiety a lot, it, it translates to them. It's, it's bad messaging for kids, is it not? Absolutely, absolutely. And um, I've worked, as I've mentioned earlier, I've worked with a lot of children, more children than ever over the pandemic. And it's mainly been because they've lost the social part of being at school. And because they're working in their bedrooms, because they've been working on Zoom and not interacting, um, a lot of them are looking up things like anxiety. So, and they're going into chat rooms and things and they're, so there's so much on the internet about it. There's so much on the news. And of course they're spreading, when the pandemic started, they were just spreading fear. Now I know uh, we, we didn't know what was happening, but sometimes they were they were guessing. I, I don't know if it's the same in the US, but in the UK they were making guesses and their assumptions about things that were going to happen that didn't happen. So they're building they're building panic and anxiety in youngsters. Um, but I, what I noticed with a lot of young people, and I'm talking to them on Zoom, so I'm the thing that yeah. they didn't do. I'm actually <laughs> well, we, we didn't have the option. We didn't have the options. Do you exactly. Know? Um, but when you can change things, but I noticed a lot of them, their anxieties were getting to that the only safe place they felt was their bedroom. So a lot, a lot of people wouldn't leave their bedroom um, and not even socialize with the family. And the other thing about that is, you know, for the, the first time, families have had to stay in the house together with, you know, mum, dad, children, yeah. all have been there for a long time. So that causes problems within the whole family because you're not we're not used to it, yeah. you know. <laughs> um, and good and bad. I mean, it's lovely. Good and bad, yeah. Good and bad. I've read some funny, some very funny. Forgive me for interrupting you. Some very comical oh. things that people have written about. Yeah. Who yeah. are these people that I'm living with? <laughs> Go ahead, June. And, and the the other thing that, um, and I'm sure must have happened in the U.S., but in the U.K., I've got I've got granddaughters. When one now of eighty, I've got granddaughters and grandsons but my uh, granddaughter that's now 18 she was going to she was ready for prom so it was her graduation she was meant to have oh. the prom so the prom was cancelled and um and, and then she's, ne she's never had it two years on she's never had a prom they left school in the UK they didn't they just left school there was no big event they just had to close the schools down so she, they, those children of her age they never said goodbye to their school and it was a They've now gone on to, to college to go to university and they haven't had the closure. So that in itself, for a lot of young people, can, can create these feelings and their sense of belonging. So 
all of a sudden they don't belong anywhere. They they were left to fend for themselves, really. And although my my granddaughter of who's now eighteen, she handled it really well. I've still got her prom dress that she's never worn, <laughs> and, and and I she said, well, uh, there's no point having that now. But a lot of her friends have found it really difficult to cope with, and yeah, it's. When you when you leave, you have your prom. When you leave, you have your prom. You stay in touch, but they weren't allowed to stay in touch. Everybody had to go home to their homes. They couldn't see each other. So that's that's a a big thing for young people. But I have noticed how resilient some of these young people are, and I've got to say, uh, a, a lot of them have handled it very well and grown up very well from it. You know. What is that like when you see that? I mean, again, that someone may say from another country, well, what's the big deal? Or, you know, they've, it's, you know, you know how people can be, well, grow up. Well, it's time to grow up. Well, it's too bad you didn't get the, a chance to have your prom. And some kids don't even go to prom and, and that, that attitude. But it's hard for kids. It is. And, it, and it's also, it's an expectation. So they've done yes. all these, they've done all the right things. They've done their exams. They've done these things. And now they're building up to leave in school to go to college. And yeah, it is an expectation. And if you don't do those things, there was no alternative. So, so, so what, what else is, you know, it's so different. What else is going to be different now? And I don't know if it's the same in the US, but in the UK, they had to, they said, well, we can't mark the exams. So they've had their final exams. We can't mark them because they they haven't done enough schooling. So they said we're we're going to um, look at the work you've done and extrapolate it forward so that we, we'll make a, a guesstimate. Um, and for people my 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 particularly my granddaughter does very well at school and she but she sure. loves she loves exams and so for her <laughs> that's great that. she and loves exams <laughs> because exam. she does well yeah i she get that her. but she couldn't do exams and so she was concerned that they might mark me mark, mark her lower but in fact oh. but her her predicted was what she was expecting so and a lot of people were happy about the, with the prediction but I, st I still think the exam things uh haven't been sorted properly because we're just coming out of the pandemic so I've got a 16 year old granddaughter that's just going through her exams now and they she hasn't had the schooling because of being off with COVID and and teachers being off with COVID so I wonder for this generation for for the two years yeah what will happen what what's going to be different about them I, we've learned a lot um but it'll be interesting to see this this young generation what they do with it the ones that have had anxiety, got round it, got through, it, got over it and changed it. I can see doing wonderful things. Yeah. The other ones. That's the ones I there. that's the ones I, I wonder about. The the other ones that haven't had the help they can they can get. And this this NLP for the world book is free. So if anybody wants to go on the website, they can download it free. They don't not nothing, don't need anything for them. And that was written with by 33 trainers. Um, internationally and there's some other great chapters in there for lots of other things that that can we wrote it for the world we wrote it was what we could do for the pandemic so yeah that, and again it's a free I'm glad you said that's a free download it is absolutely. a free free for anyone free yeah free and we've got links up at louisfreeshow.com to uh, thoughtitude.co.uk thoughtitude.co.uk and we've got those up at also at wfmj.com uh, june when when i i think about again the the whole education thing i get very concerned about because i i know here i just spoke with the teacher the other day here in the in the states that talked about how they're pushing kids forward in school that really shouldn't be kids that aren't reading at the third grade level i can get the whole thing on education i i if they're not reading in third grade at the third grade level and you put them in fourth grade, they're certainly not going to be reading at the fourth grade level. They're going to be more behind. They're going to be given more challenging reading things and they're going to get further behind. And, and it's uh, that concerns me. It concerns me what, what comes out of it. I mean, that's a whole other discussion on education, but it's, it's very concerning what happens and what effect uh, a COVID. And again, some of this, I don't, I do think is COVID related with education. Some of it, I just think is some, 
failures of, of education in the, here in the United States. I don't know if you're experiencing that as much in the UK. Yeah, I, I, so I'm, I'm, I'm not, not sure what's happening too much in, in the UK. The only part I know, because um, I don't get too involved with, although I'm seeing a lot of young people in the education side, I, I know that I see how it's affecting my grandchildren. So I've got my personal experience. Yeah. My grandson, I've got a grandson that's 14 and he's quite turned off by the homeschooling and it doesn't work for him at all. So he's, he's somehow lost his joy. He, he likes playing football and sports. And you think of all those young people that liked doing all the sport and interaction, the team games, they haven't been able to do that. And although they can do it now, it's up until very recently, we had to be very careful about who could come and see you. You've got to wear masks for everything. Although you could play, play games, it wasn't the same as it had been in the past. Um, but as I say, in the UK, we're getting back that way again. There's, um, there's a great book actually, thinking about talking about education um, from Richard called Teaching Excellence. Yes, I've had him, oh, Kate Benson on about, yeah. Yeah. That's the most wonderful book. And I use it, I used it in business as well because I love strategies. But anybody, <laughs> anybody that wants strategies or working with children and teachers, if they they use this book, it's absolutely fantastic. We're showing you strategies you can use for children of all different ages. And it would probably would be extremely useful at this time because you've got children of all different ages going through things. Um, it's even got my, my favorite things, the spelling strategy, because I, I use <laughs> how important is spelling you know youngsters the way they text now they have this whole language where they don't spell properly and, and it concerns <laughs> me and so when I work uh, and I'm working in business I sometimes get adults that actually can't spell properly and I, I show them the spelling strategy and they think it's marvelous and some people that have got dyslexia, not easy for them, but this wonderful, really efficient strategy of just showing somebody how to spell. And um, I, I've been working with a lot of young people that are doing their our exams at 16 are called GCSEs. And you need to get maths and science. For nearly every apprenticeship you do, you need maths and science. Um, and I find that one of, if, if somebody can do their times tables, and it sounds ridiculous if you're 16 years old, but a lot of it's based on you do need to know your times tables to do the more advanced things. So I use my times table, which is the same as a spelling strategy where I teach them the times table. And oh, wow. it's, it's, it's really good just by using different colored pens for them to see the visual of, you know, five times five equals 25, but written out in different colors. And it really works well. And if they can get into that mode of knowing their tables, when you come into an exam that you find challenging, if you've got the foundations, you're fine, absolutely fine. You can do something. And that's what I say to, to and I've, I've been helping my 16 year old granddaughter with her maths and yeah, the times tables, really helpful. If you know the foundations, that's what they told me when I was training to be an accountant. Know yeah. the foundations, you really fine. You'll be fine. I'm talking with June O'Driscoll. Again, uh, you can go to Thoughtitude, thoughtitude.co.uk, thoughtitude.co.uk. I want to talk a little bit more about a life coaching and, and how, how you help people. Yeah, well, and uh, it's funny with where people say to me, because um, I train people to, as coaches as well, they say, isn't there too many coaches? And I thought there will never be because people will always want to get better, be better at things, get smarter, or they may have issues they need to get over. So the life coaching, it's usually it depends if we're doing it in business or not. But life coach, if you do executive coaching, you can go into a business, see CEO or anybody on the on the board. That's really the same as life coaching, even though we're doing it. At executive level so that we know how to we've worked in boardrooms ourselves so we know some of the problems they would have but usually if you're working at that level it's also life coaching so you're helping them with whatever issues the whole holistic view of a person life coaching for the individual which we do a lot of it's people want to get better 
And yes, you can look at phobias, et cetera, but it's normally people, they may want to start uh, a new business. They might have set up and they don't know where to start, might not have the confidence, or they're in a rut at work and maybe they want to do something else but feel they don't have the skills. Maybe they want to be promoted. And it's really about, they t I, I ask them, what do you want? And then they'll tell me where they want to go. We start at A, they want to go to B, and I fill the gaps. So we get them to where they want to be, and all by questioning. A lot of people think that a life coach is going to tell you the answers. We don't. We don't do that at all. What we do is you, we ask the right question. And a lot of my questions are questions I use from the meta model, NLP. I find it the most exquisite language, NLP. So I use that in my life coaching. So someone tells you what they want and I get them to generate the options. I don't give them options. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Uh, yeah, some people think they, they come to you and they say, well, I don't know what, I want you to give me the answers. If I gave everybody the answers, I'd be out of work very quickly and then <laughs> their, life, their life would be very lim limited because it would just be my map of the world. Yeah. I work on them and broaden their outlook so that they have more choices and they have more freedom. And it's, it's, it's about empowering people. But it, it could be uh, some people just want need motivation. So they, they, they might want to do a job or a hobby and they say, oh, the, I don't know if it was the same in the US, but in the pandemic, apparently um, the most common language that everyone was learning was Welsh. And I don't know if you've heard. Really? And, I didn't. <laughs> yeah. And I, it's a really difficult language. I, I, I say this respectfully. I don't think that was probably the same in, in, in the States, but I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe yeah. it was. <laughs> It was reported that, that it was reported. And I thought, how could anybody, it's a great language, but how sure. useful is that? It's a very, very yeah. small part of the place. <laughs> but I myself uh, started learning Spanish. And not- How's not it going? Oh, it, it was, oh, it's fun. It's fun. And <laughs> I, I like the process of learning. And, and I, luckily, a lot of my friends are from South America. Um, and I hear them, but they talk so fast. <laughs> And I catch one word. And yeah, yeah. It, isn't that great though? <laughs> and I, I think all these wonderful people that can speak many languages, it's a great strategy. I really enjoy the process. It's, it's, it's great learning. So uh, yeah, that, that's quite, uh, quite a fun thing. But yes, that could be people that are coming to me for life coaching because they want to do something and they haven't got the motivation. So they need to be motivated. And I think we found that again in the pandemic that it was great at first and everyone was spring cleaning their house and clearing yeah, it, yeah, yeah. repainting it. And then it, it, it got boring. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say, not me. I started to cook curries. I started to get into cooking oh, curries. Wow, <laughs> nice. Well, I had a blast, but it was like, <laughs> I didn't write down any of the recipes or anything, oh. but, I, but it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of yeah. experimenting, experimenting. I tell you what, I was teaching my, my granddaughter, the 16 year old, I was teaching her how to make cupcakes. I, I love making cakes. Oh, it's wonderful. And I was teaching her over Zoom and I was trying to show her. So On I've got Zoom. my Mac and I, I've got a bowl here with all the ingredients in. And I said, this is what it looks like. And I went like that and I poured all the ingredients. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Did you did you save the Mac? Did the I saved the Mac. Oh. I saved the Mac. But the, the good thing about that, my granddaughter laughed so much. It really helped with the enjoyment of baking. I was and gonna say, did did she get did you get the video of that of that going all over the the mag? That that would be a great. <laughs> you can yeah you you can hear me you can hear me scream and go scream. oh. No. oh. <laughs> she became so good and um, she still is. She's great at making cakes now, and it she That's gets yeah she she creates things that I can't make. She made me. They, um, she made me last last year and the year before she made me my birthday cake, which was oh, precious, right? Yeah. yeah. And it was a Victoria sandwich. I don't know if you know what that is with strawberries and cream. I don't know. Oh. A Victoria sandwich. That's yeah. what it's called. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's a, it's quite a, a famous cake. We, we have a program called Great British Bake Off. Um, I which, think I've seen that on yeah. PBS here in the States where they, yeah. yeah, I mean, not a lot. I haven't seen it a lot, but I, I've seen an episode or two. It's, it's fun. 
I always feel bad for the person that gets kicked off though. So do I. (laughs) My husband always says to me, you should go to that program. I said, no, I shouldn't. No, 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 no. (laughs) Thank you very much. Maybe you should. Yeah, you know, <laughs> but I, I enjoy making cakes, but I wouldn't want to make it under that condition. I, I like the enjoyment that's, of the process. Yeah, that's interesting. Under that, the pressure, under that condition, and them telling you what you have to make yeah. as opposed to. See, I wouldn't. I love to cook, but I wouldn't like someone telling me. Yeah, okay. as you say that, June, I wouldn't want someone saying, "Okay, you've got to use this," and just like, eh, "No." Yeah, the creativity goes. Yeah. It's nice to know a basic recipe and then play with it and put the things in that you want to that makes it yours and yes. and, and be creative. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Except I, I uh, my problem is, I should come to you for life coaching. I always think if it tastes good, it's like, you know what? What if I? But what if I put a little bit more of something else in? And it's like, oh, I should have left it alone. Sometimes <laughs> I need my thing is being able to walk away when it's good. Okay, it's good. That's it. Walk away from it. At that, it's like it could be a little better. If, and sometimes it is, but oftentimes yeah. it's like, eh, I should have left it alone. <laughs> Well, that's a good good for you going forward is to just 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 stop and just yeah walk away. Except I don't. <laughs> I don't. I always get back in that thing. What? But what if I put a little of something else? In? Yeah, it's always like it could be a little bit better. I'm talking with Juno Driscoll again. When you said that about about the and I'm thinking about some of the things when you said about anxiety where we started about the word anxiety and changing the word to something fun. I'm thinking about what you did with your granddaughter with baking, just some of the other things. You know, learning a language. You know, yes, you can sit. And some of the people that worried. Um, it was, uh, oh God, what was somebody turned me on to the Morrissey song, Stop Watching the News. Stop watching the news. The news contrives to frighten you. It makes you feel small and afraid. And this was an older song from a couple of decades ago. But some people that I would speak with, they would knew the COVID numbers. I mean, they knew well in Ohio, well, in your area. And it was a friend of mine from out of the air, knew how many, and it's, and, it's, and I'm, I would say, I won't use the expletive, but what, what, what are you paying attention to the, well, I'm concerned for you. Well, you know, if I get COVID, get, you know, I'm doing so the over, that were, some people were too, again, watching the news. And I dare say with the, with, with the, the hell that's going on in Ukraine, people are watching it and it's, it's difficult. It's, I, I, I watch it. I want to know what's going on. And then I see, someone crying and then I start crying and, or I see someone, it's just, it's, what do we do with all of that? Any well, thoughts? Do you mind yeah. if I go there? Uh, well, no, I don't. I, I mean, what, what, what's happening in the world is, is tremendously sad and anything we can do, anything we can do by doing something, donating things to people that need, look after people, et cetera, we can, we can, we can do positive things. Um, and the thing is, if people, if we listen to the, what the media may keep telling us that might happen, again, we don't yes. know the answers to this. So we are creating anxiety. Yes. So a good the positive thing to do is say, well, what, I wonder what I can do to actually help. What these can people. I do? Beautiful. What can I do? And that's beautiful. Know? And, uh, you know, uh, how, whatever denomination or whatever, anyone, we can all do something to help somebody. And I, I saw um, when I looked at the, the news in the UK today, they're saying, um, asking people to offer refugees homes. Um, and, you know, that, that, that would be wonderful if you could offer to help the refugees that um, we can do something about it. We're not the big powers that have, have we can't do much effect about what's happening apart from we can help the people that need anything from us or send things clothing or or whatever what's ever asked we can help those people but also what about if we're just kinder to ourselves and kinder to other people so if instead of just thinking of bad things all the time if we could just be kind and smile and maybe grateful for what we've got if we spread more of that, maybe that would be a really good just thing. Just be kind. 
just be kind, you know, there's, it doesn't cost anything to be kind. It doesn't cost anything to smile at somebody. And you could turn somebody that's having a bad day to have a good day. And yes, whatever, whatever anybody can do to help the refugees, I'm sure we're, we're all doing it on, on the very basic level, smile, be kind, um, and be great. That. Yeah. And be grateful. You know, I love that. Gina Driscoll, when you say that about about kind, and I know one of the things, and I've said this a lot on the show, when bothered me when we first had to wear masks, is because I like to smile. I, mm. you know, and or if you know if you're at a grocer or whatever, to please go ahead and with a smile. And I was afraid it wasn't. And I remember taking a magic marker and drawing a big smile yeah. on it because it just it bothered me. And I understand eyes, I understand eye expressions, etc. Nonetheless, it just didn't seem the same. And just to smile at someone you don't know who's having yeah. a day and, and who a, a difficult time and the difference that might make. Yeah, and, and it's funny you should say that. When, when, when the pandemic first happened, I, I, I was in the state, I was here. Um, and so I had to, when I flew back to the UK, we were on lockdown. And That's right, yeah. And then I had to go and have a test because I'd flown in. And I went to the airport and now I didn't recognize the airport, it closed down, but we had like wow. army. And so I had to go to this place and there was like armed army people and people all with masks. It was quite intimidating. And when I got to take this test and it wasn't like a place, when I'd left a month before, this looked very different. And I went up and there was this big man there with a mask on and then he just held up a card and he said, under my mask, I'm smiling. And that just wow. made me feel great inside that these are human beings, they're doing a serious job. And I thought well, that was a wonderful thing. So he couldn't put smiley face on, but he, he put that up and it changed everything. And, and I thought, nice. See, that's, yeah, under my mask, I'm smiling. Just the, the little things, the little yeah. things. I know for me, and I, I've said this a lot, the little human interactions that we have yeah. in our life and our day mean so much more to me now. And I'm, I've said, I'm not sure if it's, my age or COVID or combination, but it's just the, the little things, the little things mm. that people do, you know, someone letting you in and traffic is, you know, just little things and smiling yeah. at them. If you I, can. I have, I have Thank no, you people. Thank yeah. you people that. People are, are I mean, that the service in, in the, U, the United States is wonderful. Anyway, we have, but you have very good customer service here. Um, but and I noticed in the, the UK that people are getting kinder, more polite, and yes, being more tolerant of others. More tolerant, yeah, more understand. We're all going through it. We're all going. We're all going through something, Juno yeah. Driscoll. And I love that you say that. And I'm, it's interesting you say customer service in the states is because right. I'm sure a lot of people in the states think it's probably better in the UK. <laughs> oh wow! I'm sure. We, you know, it's always like a, what is that about elsewhere? It's always better somewhere else, or yeah. you know that that idea. Was greener. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That it's got, always got to be. The people are are nice here, but again, we can we can change that uh, again. One relation, one smile at a time. Right. Yeah. One smile. I love. Time. I love when I come into the hotel. They say good morning, Miss June. That I find that so nice to be called Miss June. It's just great. And and that that's that frightens my day. I, I think it's it's so polite. It's lovely. I like it. And see, yeah. and our our concept. I guarantee that people are thinking they're probably more polite in the UK. That's that would be my if somebody asked me just a, a, would you would you think and I haven't been to the UK would you think people are more polite in the states or the UK honestly I would go right to probably the UK uh, yeah. that's that's what I would think uh, you know it's it's interesting and you're here and you're seeing a, a different perspective I, oh. I find that interesting yeah and I know it, but, but we are polite in that we're we, we we are polite speaking to each other customer service however oh <laughs> <laughs> I think the U.S. top it. <laughs> By nature, we're very polite, but our customer uh, service that's is it. Not, <laughs> that's interesting. I've been talking with June O'Driscoll. I always love talking with you. When you get back to UK, let's let's uh, catch up again and and yeah. and do another segment, if you will. Uh, Thoughtitude.co.uk. I always love speaking with you. Thoughtitude.co.uk.co.uk, and you can go and we've got the direct link up to the page where you've got the free ebook, and you can download that. And that's absolutely wonderful and so helpful. I'm I'm grateful 
thank you so much for doing the gig with me and putting up with my madness and my tardiness and all of my hope I at least am polite. <laughs> polite well, you're very service. polite, Louis. And it's always a pleasure to speak with you. Always a pleasure and honor on my end. Thank you so much. I just love talking with her, June O'Driscoll. And she is in Florida. And I just love that about the customer service because again, it seems so. I don't know, what do I want? So different than what most people are